Chocolate is a derivative of the fruit of the cocoa tree. It is made from the seeds of this tree, which are astringent and quite bitter. Remind, we have a giveaway of a $100 valued item of your choice for the first 1,000 subscribers. Hurry up and don't miss it. Chocolate is an intense, delicious, and versatile product. The two most popular types are dark chocolate and milk chocolate. Chocolate owes its existence to the cocoa seed. Ancient civilizations in Mexico, Central America, and South America cultivated cocoa to make beverages, but it was not until 1847 when a company invented solid chocolate. Chocolate is the food obtained by mixing sugar with two products derived from cocoa seeds, cocoa mass, and cocoa butter. It is the world's most popular and consumed sweet in its various forms, versions, and preparations. Chocolate bars are one of the foods that appeal to both adults and children alike. This is how we have traditionally known one of the most desirable and addictive foods for some. Chocolate began as a drink. Mayas and Aztecs recognized it as a gift from their gods, and it was also used as a means of exchange for bartering goods. Christopher Columbus was the first European to try it. The cocoa plant only grows in the tropics. So the origin of chocolate raw material comes from countries located in these areas of the planet, characterized by a warm and humid environment that favors its growth. Dark chocolate is a type of chocolate that has a higher concentration of cocoa butter and less milk. In reality, it is possible to prepare it without any milk, making it perfect for people who cannot consume dairy products. The world consumes around 36 million tons of cocoa per year, a figure that has an annual average growth of 2.1% according to data from the United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization. Brazil, Colombia, and Ecuador stand out in cocoa production, countries not only dedicated to the cultivation of the plant, but also to its processing. Before becoming a tablet, chocolate powder, milk, or the topping of the best desserts, cocoa undergoes a very long process and requires the work of dozens of hands for its cultivation. The cocoa tree, although fast growing, takes between four and five years to bear its first fruits, so producers spend a lot of time caring for their crops without receiving any benefit in return. Cocoa fruits must be collected manually with care not to damage the stem that joins each fruit to the tree. If a curved knife is used to pick them up, the stem will remain intact and more fruits will be able to grow on each tree. Between 20 and 30 fruits grow on each tree per year, and the annual harvest of one tree provides approximately 450 grams of chocolate. There are between 30 and 50 seeds in each fruit, and these are responsible for making the chocolate that we all love. It is difficult to imagine seeing its natural appearance. Since it was discovered in Central America more than 3,000 years ago, the whole world has taken a liking to chocolate, although they do not all taste the same. Like coffee, tea, and wine, the land, climate, and extraction process affect its final flavor. The cocoa tree only grows on the high, humid, and warm lands, a thousand kilometers from the equator. In the cocoa plantation of Malaysia, they cultivate more than 100 hectares of cocoa per year. First, the trees must be planted. The small seeds are planted in bags filled with coarse, damp soil. In a few days, the seeds begin to sprout, and after four weeks, the plant reaches 30 centimeters, although it still takes three years to become sturdy trees and start bearing fruit. After waiting so long, the last thing they want is for an annoying insect to spoil this valuable fruit, so they protect each seed with plastic. Harvesting the fruit is a challenge. They don't fall from trees. They must be cut down at more than 35 degrees under the sun. The work requires double effort to collect 15 Ococo pods per day. Once stacked, they are transported to other facilities on the plantation for processing. The seeds are also extracted by hand. These seeds were used as currency, and with them, a tomato or pumpkin could be purchased. To bring out their flavor, they are left to ferment in tubs for six days. This process softens the bitterness and starts to release the essential aromas of the cocoa. Through cocoa fermentation, we obtain the first approximation, both in aroma and taste, to chocolate itself. 
After an adequate fermentation process, the fruits are dried and separated, and only the best quality ones are sent for final processing. They are spread out in the sun to dry their skin until they fall. Now what was once pure and dark grain is ready to become chocolate, but not before it passes through the factory. Every year, 65,000 tons of cocoa are distributed, with millions of 65 kilogram bags arriving from Malaysia, Indonesia, and Africa. They are sorted and piled up in this large warehouse. This factory makes chocolate in various forms and sells it to companies that manufacture different products. It also supplies other chocolate derivatives such as cocoa powder or cocoa butter. Most of the seeds that arrive here come from West Africa, which cultivates 70% of all plantations. A conveyor belt moves the seeds through a cleaning system made up of a series of carpets that filter out twigs, stones, and other debris. The next stop is a micronizer, a rotating drum that heats the cocoa seeds to remove the husk. Then they enter a machine called an Aventador, which removes the shell from inside the seeds. The seeds are then dragged by filters that remove large pieces of shell. Afterwards, a vacuum cleaner sucks up all the smaller pieces that may remain. When the shell is removed, the inner part of the seed, called Lu, is exposed. The factory roasts the seeds to enhance their flavor. More than 50% of the seed is fat, which is cocoa butter. To prepare chocolate, processed cocoa butter and sugar are combined. And if it is milk chocolate that is being made, powdered milk is added. The seeds are first ground, and heat and friction activate the cocoa butter, producing pure liquid chocolate called chocolate liquor. Other ingredients are added in different proportions depending on the type of chocolate being made. For example, dark chocolate requires more chocolate liquor, but no powdered milk. And obviously, the recipe for sugar-free chocolate does not contain sugar. A mixer blends the ingredients until they reach a very thick dough-like consistency. The flavor is good, but the texture needs to be smoothed out. To do this, the chocolate is moved to a refining machine, passing between a set of five cylinders that reduce the size of the particles so much that in a matter of minutes, the chocolate comes out of the refiner as a fine and dry powder. But now it needs to be liquefied again, so the next stop is a snail machine. Friction and heat activate the cocoa butter again, returning the powder to a liquid state. At this point, more cocoa butter is added, enough to reduce the viscosity to the desired thickness. For example, to make chocolate chips, a different thickness is needed than for a thin coating. The snail machine feeds a machine called the drop former, which drops the chocolate onto a conveyor belt. Depending on the size of the nozzles, chocolate chips of various sizes and shapes can be produced. They enter a cooling tunnel and move inside for about five minutes, crossing several temperature zones ranging from 10 to 15 degrees. When they exit the tunnel, they have cooled and hardened. Next, a conveyor belt passes them through a metal detector, a standard food safety measure. The factory also produces bulk chocolate bars weighing four and a half kilos. A filling machine fills plastic molds in the shape of bars, and then a conveyor belt moves them to an elevator system that transports them to a cold room for about two hours. This constant movement ensures air circulation, which helps in the cooling process. As the chocolate cools, it contracts slightly, allowing the bars to easily come out of the molds. To ensure the chocolate has a good appearance and delicious taste, the factory cools and then heats the chocolate before depositing it. This process, called tempering, stimulates the growth of stable cocoa butter crystals and gives the chocolate a smooth, shiny, and appealing appearance. In this way, the factory produces millions of chocolate bars so that no one misses out on their wonderful taste. The bars are distributed to supermarkets worldwide by these trucks. Remember, you can subscribe to the channel and give a like if you enjoyed the content. Bye-bye.